Um, so we offer two types of map board. Um, we have four ply and eight ply. Um, and that just refers to the thickness of the map board itself. All of our map board is 100% cotton museum board. Uh, a lot of labs, a lot of places use either conservation board, which is not 100% cotton. It will be acid free, but it's still wood pulp that they've put chemicals in to reduce the acid. So it will break down faster than the museum rag board. So this is the best you're going to get in the industry. It's 100% cotton, lignin free, and it's the most archival uh, that's available. So four ply is just uh, half as thin as basically a ply. So I can try to, you can kind of see these, but we also have some other comparisons here. We're just going to show you all the things. So here, let's do this. We'll do a top down here. So, um, let me get this situated for you guys. Okay, so this photo is four ply. This is what we did, uh, but um, over a year, uh, yeah, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I guess, uh, we went to eight ply. So all of our framing automatically comes with eight ply. Usually if you go to museums, uh, they're going to be an A ply almost all the time. It's sturdier, thicker, it's just a more luxurious mat. A lot of labs, when they're doing framing, they're doing the four ply and it's probably more of a conservation quality and it's not the museum 100% cotton uh, quality. Uh, so we have the best mat board you can get, but then also the framing is A ply for us and so it's um, just an added level and a lot of labs don't do the A-ply because it, it, is, it is more expensive and it's a higher quality mat board. Um, so if you're doing mat only, when you're ordering through us, so you can when you go and you're just doing like a matted print, you, you'll have the choice of 4-ply or 8-ply. If it's a frame, it's automatically going to come 8-ply uh, every time. Yeah. What you got? Uh, I mean, it, sh it typically will fit in a regular frame. I mean, sometimes you, if you're going to like Target or somewhere, sometimes, I mean, there is a chance your client might buy like a really cheap thin frame where an 8-ply mat would, would not fit in there. But that's pretty rare. Um, they have to, I mean, it has to be a really, really thin frame for an 8-ply mat not to fit um, in terms of depth. So. Uh, as long as you're buying just a halfway decent frame, it should be it should be deep enough. So we, we rarely get anybody emailing saying that it doesn't actually fit. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe less than a handful of times. It's like extremely rare. So because um, it's when we mat it, um, I'm trying to see if you can show this Andy vertically. It's kind of hard to keep them. So the eight ply uh, thickness, it's about a quarter, a little less than a quarter inch. Um, this is the eight ply here. Um, four ply is about an eighth of an inch in terms of um, thickness because the front and back mat. If you're if you are doing eight ply in like a folio box or museum case, you will not be able to fit as many in those as well. So that's something else to consider. It will take up basically, basically twice as much space, a little, little less than twice as much, I guess. But, but yeah. Question. Yeah. Other questions. Are the mats of pure white? Are there any plans for a slightly matte stone? There, they are. I don't know if. You, if you've ever like tried to paint your house and like pick a white, <laughs> there's it's uh these are 100% natural cotton, so I would say they are slightly warm. Um, there are mats on the market that we've 
I've ordered by accident actually that they are a little cool, which I, it does not go well with our prints because our especially our archival prints because they're a hundred percent cotton and the mats are hundred percent cotton. The tones are like perfect, and so it's a perfect pairing. Uh, we don't really have a lot of plans right now to add more matte colors, mostly because we're in a small space and just the logistics of adding all of that to our software and all the selections and not confusing people. So we, we keep it kind of classic and simple right now um, with the mats. So, But you never know down the road. Uh, this is a deckled print that's matted. Uh, a and so we float the print on a two-ply um, museum board. So the edges are a little off. So if you order a deco print plus a it will come like this every time. You don't have to request it or anything. Like we'll automatically float it so that the edges uh, reveal. And then here for comparison's sake. This is an eight inch. Uh, so this is the smallest we offer. This is an 8x10 print here. And, uh, and this would be 8 so. Great questions. Keep them coming. Um, I don't need the museum case, but yeah, we can do the just mats. So uh, let's talk about some other creative things that we can do. Um, so I'm just taking a peek at what we have. Um, so this is like a standard. This is a standard situation where it's just a whoop. 8 by 10, 11 by 14. Um, Dylan John, appreciate it. Uh, with the photo. So this is a Narav Patel picture. Um, so this is a couple things going on with this one specifically. Um, so this is not actually the, not a circle print, but what it is is it's a square print, but we cut out a circle opening in the mat. Uh, and then also bottom. So this is what I'm waiting where we more mat board at the bottom. Even border, or even the bot. So, uh, pretty classic way. You'll see this a lot of times in museums and art galleries. They usually add a little bit more mat board at the bottom. Um, but you can do this. It's a bit of a custom request. But all you would do is you would just order, uh, like let's say like an eight by eight print in eleven by fourteen mat, and then you would just request a circle opening for the mat. And then we just do this. We could do this in four ply or eight ply. But if you're doing a circle images, I would ask, um, things that are really center, centered images and not putting stuff on the edges because it's a good chance you're going to get something cropped out uh, that way. Um, it's available whenever. Just use the order notes. Questions after all this, you can email us or use our chat function on our website. So. Uh, here's another bottom weight um, matting. This is Lejeune King. Follow her at photos by LJK on Instagram. So this is a 5x7 horizontally in a vertical 11x14, which is a really great combination to bottom weight. Uh, and these are, these are also some creative things that when we do like museum cases, um, are some great options to change it up. So they're a little more, a little different. Um, things like this where you can do like a four by six and 11 by 14 mat. Just a more mat board sometimes is really, really nice than filling it. Um, but it's a, it's a really nice pairing. It's kind of an intimate way to do it because you have to really look up close. And then we can also do, um, Two and one, so these are two five by sevens, 
in an 11 by 14 mat. Cicilla Johansson, Hansen, horrible <laughs> names. But anyway, her work is absolutely gorgeous. Um, she has a YouTube channel. Make sure if you find her YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe because she's uh, she's awesome. Yeah, questions. I love them. Let's go. Framing a circle deckled edge. Um, we will get to that in a second. I would say we're gonna we're gonna show you our um, how we frame things in terms of the matting options you have. So the final frame size depends on what you select in terms of the matting options. Um, but yeah, we'll circle back to that in the framing section. I th it'll make more sense when I actually have something I can show you. If, they're cl if a client has, has a framer that they prefer, oh, so we're not it, right, the yeah, totally fine. Yeah, we have, we have people that do that all the time. We work with photographers either the photographer has a local framer that they have a really great relationship with, or the client has a local framer um, that they have a great relationship with. So, uh, a local framer will, is very skilled, so they can take a loose decal print and do what we do in terms of matting it. And framing it. Uh, sometimes we'll have people where we'll do the printing and the matting and they'll just take that to the local framer. Um, but either way is fine. So uh, local framers are amazing craftsmen. They have more options than what we have. Um, and so that's completely viable option for people. Yeah, great question. So um, the two number one killers for prints is ultraviolet light and heat. So those are the two things you really want to avoid as much as possible to extend the life of a print. Uh, if you are exposing a print uh, out in the open, essentially, with no UV protection, uh, really the only way to get great UV protection is through uh, acrylic or glass that is blocks that has a UV blocking coating. So if you don't have that, it will reduce the print by quite a bit. I would say at least by half, potentially more, depending on where the print is. Um, there was a photographer last year that did a really cool study. She she kind of did a self uh, scientific <laughs> study where she got a bunch of prints from um, different types like luster, fine art cotton prints. She, there was like 10 different variations. It, it, I don't think she printed from us, but just in general. She literally taped them to like her window that was just full sun as much as possible. And she, after a year, she documented what they look like. And the fine art cotton prints, uh, the same type of stuff we use, looked brand new. But like all the luster prints, pretty much anything cheaper, had like huge color shift, was like turning yellow or just fading. Um, so it was good to see that held up. Um, but it, w it will reduce it if you don't put it behind uh, UV acrylic or glass. But it will still last longer than anything else in the industry. So, uh, but you'll get, you're exposing it to dust and things as well, which you don't really, it's hard because you don't really want to clean it uh, that way. So I don't, I don't suggest just leaving a print on an easel for years. So, yeah. Another question about custom matting. Yep. How many pictures can you fit on one mat and what are the options? Uh, those, so if you're doing multiple openings for matting, uh, we can do a lot. And a lot of it's just custom and so you just need to contact us. Uh, we've, we've done three in a mat, like three five by sevens. We've done four. Uh, we could do nine, like nine five by fives, uh, like a nine up or whatever is what they call that. Um, we've done very, we did one, um, I think it was for Shannon Griffin, where we did these really, it was almost like a puzzle piece of like eight different sizes and they were all 
uh, different sizes. It was like her wedding day in one frame, essentially. Um, so they're just not uh, in the ordering software. But if you have an idea, like we can do it. It's just a custom quote, essentially. So get creative, dream, sketch out ideas, and then just contact us, and we'll see if we can do it or not. So um, we can do we can do a lot. So um, yeah. If I don't ever answer your question fully, let me know. Um, One more question. Okay. Um, what are your mounting options for matted prints? For mounting options for matted prints? Um, so mounting and matting for us is two different processes and two different worlds. Um, the only, only time mounting is ever involved with matting for us is if it's a deckle print that's being matted where we mount it on that two-ply inside of uh, the mat opening. But other than that, we don't, um, we don't combine them. So mounting for us is a three millimeter PVC board. Uh, we have black and white, and th that's just it. That's just, we, tr we hand trim it so that it's flush on the sides. Um, and it, that print is permanently on there. Uh, if you try to remove it, you'll pretty much ruin the print. Um, matting is the most archival way to preserve a print, because how we do it is we um, we hinge the print at the top um, so that you could take the mats apart. Uh, th the mats might suffer damage, but you could still get to the actual original print if you needed to. Um, where mounting, it's the board is essentially a part of the print at that point. Um, so it's, it's usually either one or the other. We don't we don't combine the processes typically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we use uh, like a transfer tape that's archival um, for the print to the um, two ply. Same thing for the two ply to the backboard. So, and then the, the outside edges, we're using um, archival transfer tape with um, archival PVA glue to like make sure it's permanent and locked down.